All right, continuing on with acids and bases. So we're going to talk now about strong versus weak acids. So first, we have our strong acids. There's only a few strong acids, and the first example we have is hydrochloric acid, which is in your stomach and helps you digest stuff. And that is the perfect cue for my dogs to start barking. Continuing with strong acids, as you continue to hear the chorus, nitric acid it is used to cauterize warts, which basically means like it helps you like sort of heal them. It's also in drugs, explosives, fertilizers, and dyes. So naturally, I picked the dye part as a colorful example of what nitric acid can do. And then we also have our sulfuric acid. Low concentrations treat stomach hypoacidity. They are also used for fertilizers, dyes, and glues. And for that, I just was able to find this chart about different uses of sulfuric acid. There's a joke about um, sulfuric acid consumption out there that you can ask me about outside of this lecture. Strong acids are strong electrolytes, as I was talking about before, which means they conduct electricity. They ionize 100%. So when they're in solution, they exist completely in ion form. And there'll be an image that explains that a little later, and I'll go over it again. But this 100% ionization, or near 100% ionization, makes them really good conductors. And they can cause severe burns to your body tissue. And the reason why hydrochloric acid in your stomach doesn't burn your stomach lining is because of the cells that produce a special mucus that prevents the hydrochloric acid from burning. But if you've ever had like an ulcer or if you've known anyone that had an ulcer, this would be an issue that would be an issue with your stomach lining not working properly. Weak acids, which are most of the acids that exist in nature. You have your acetic acid, which exists in antimicrobial solutions. You have your carbonic acid, which is how you get your sodas. You have your phosphoric acid, which is how you get soaps. So picture of soda for your carbonic acid, picture of soap for your phosphoric acid. And here's the image I was talking about with the ionization. So on the left, you'll see your hydrochloric acid in solution. And you'll notice that instead of any of it existing as HCl, the molecule, all of it exists as either H plus ions or Cl minus ions. So either your hydrogen plus ion or your chlorine minus ion, chloride ion, if you will. So it completely separates into this um, ionic solution, as opposed to on the right, where you'll see your weak acid. Some of it separates into its ionic forms, but most of it stays as a molecule, like as the complete molecule. So that's what the biggest difference between a strong versus a weak acid is. A strong acid will completely ionize, whereas a weak acid a lot of it will stay as its molecular form without separating, which is why weak acids and weak bases even can act as sort of buffers because there's not a lot. There's a lot of mole molecular form still there, and so there's a lot of room for uh, ionization to occur. So that leads us into the strengths of bases. I once again apologize for my dogs. But here are some examples of strong bases. You have your sodium hydroxide, which can remove grease in drains and ovens. Magnesium hydroxide, which can act as an antacid and a laxative. And aluminum hydroxide, which is also an antacid and can absorb toxins and gases. And can also cause constipation, which is not super fun, but it exists. And then for your example, I have on the side there some sodium hydroxide pellets. Notice how a lot of them, actually all of them, have OH in their formula. 
showing how easy it is to separate the OH minus ion. Strong bases are also strong electrolytes. They also have 100% dissociation in water, which makes them good conductors, and can also damage things such as your skin and your eyes. Weak bases, some examples include ammonia, which is a waste product of protein breakdown in the body. Uh, see, I believe that's carbonate ion. I'd have to look that up. But it's also an antacid. But notice how all of these are um, negatively charged, and so they have their OH separated from them. And then on the side there is your weak acid ammonia, otherwise known as a waste product in urine. Weak bases are weak electrolytes and do not contain OH minus themselves, but they react with water. So they create a small number of OH minus because of their reaction with water. And you can see sort of the reaction here with ammonia plus water. Some of it becomes, some of it basically like pulls the H plus ion away from water and it becomes um, an ammonium ion. And then you have your hydroxide ion there. So that is how weak bases work. Instead of just producing their own OH by direct ionization, they cause water to ionize. Acid base neutralization. So the main idea of this is that if you combine an acid and a base, you will get salt and you will get water as your products. So this example uses strong acid and strong base to, that is hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide to get sodium chloride and water. Acids and bases neutralize each other and they must be in equal concentrations. Now, in real life, you very rarely will you ever mix a strong acid and a strong base because usually that has a lot of energy associated with it and you'll just get a big explosion before you get your products. So usually you would use weak acids and weak bases for this. And then this is just a summary of everything we've learned. As you can see, you have your acid and your base. Your acids produce hydronium ions. Your bases produce hydroxide ions. And it shows the difference between strong and weak acids. So basically, if it completely ionizes, it's strong. And if it only does ionization to a small degree, it's weak. And then it talks about what it means to be on the pH scale. This, con this idea of concentration of H plus versus OH. And then neutralization, you get your salt and your water. So that's everything that you should know about acids and bases. And please complete the guided notes that go along